Summary of Ghosts by Henrik Ibsen Jacob Engstrand, a carpenter and frequent drinker, visits his daughter Regine one morning as she works as a maid for Mrs. Alving. Engstrand is almost done with the work that Mrs. Alving asked him to do at the nearby orphanage, to mark the tenth anniversary of her husband's death. The next day is the grand opening of the orphanage. Since Engstrand's job is done, he plans to go back to his home in a nearby town. As he gets closer to the Alving home, Regine tells him to leave because she doesn't want anyone to see her talking to him. Regine doesn't want to be seen with Engstrand because she knows he's a drinker. Instead, she wants to make a smart impression. Engstrand tells Regine to come home with him while he ignores her. He says that he wants to open a hotel for sailors. He knows that this sounds like a sketchy place, but he says that only leaders and other important people will stay there. He also says that he wants Regine to give the hotel a womanly feel and that the sailors will want to have fun in the nights. Regine tells Engstrand to leave because she can't stand the thought of leaving her life with the Alvings. He scolds her for not being a good daughter. As Engstrand is leaving, Pastor Manders goes to Mrs. Alving's house to talk about the home with her. Pastor Manders is in charge of the orphanage's funds, and he tells her that he doesn't think they should buy insurance for the house. He says this is because buying insurance might make people think they don't trust God to protect the school. He admits it's a risky choice, but he says there's nothing else to do. Mrs. Alving decides to drop all insurance, but she does say that the home had a small fire the day before when Engstrand was working on a pile of wood shavings that caught fire. This bothers Manders, but he doesn't keep talking about insurance. Instead, he says that Engstrand is a good man at heart, even though he drinks too much and isn't careful. Oswald, Mrs. Alving's son, came home from Paris because he was too tired to paint anymore. This was the first time he had been home in a long time. Pastor Manders and Mrs. Alving are still talking when Oswald comes in and says hello to them both. Pastor Manders can't believe his eyes when he sees the young guy because he hasn't seen Oswald in a long time, since Oswald left home when he was young. Even though the minister is friendly, Oswald is reluctant to be kind to Manders. Mrs. Alving says that Oswald is still angry that Manders looked down on him when he left home to become an artist. Manders quickly explains that he no longer thinks that all young artists are evil, but he still has concerns about the strange lives that many of them lead. When Oswald hears this, he tells him that none of his artist friends have ever done anything illegal. He also says that many of his close friends have loved homes and families even though they don't have enough money to get married. Manders is shocked by this because he thinks that if two people live together, they should be married. Still, Oswald doesn't take back what he said, but he lets Mrs. Alving and Pastor Manders finish talking. Pastor Manders tells Mrs. Alving that he has something to say to her once Oswald has left the room. He scolds her for leaving her husband so soon after they got married. It seems that Mrs. Alving left Captain Alving soon after they got married because he was acting like a drunk and a cheater. So, she went to Pastor Manders, but he told her to go back home because he thought it was a wife's job to stay with her husband no matter what. Now that Captain Alving has stopped being bad, Pastor Manders is proud of himself for getting her to go back to him. He also says that Mrs. Alving is a bad mother because she sent Oswald away from home when he was a child. He says that children should stay with their parents. He says that Mrs. Alving sent Oswald away because she was too selfish to deal with the stress of being a mother. Mrs. Alving tells the minister that he is talking about things he doesn't know much about after she has heard him talk. To show him this, she tells him that he stopped coming to see her and her husband soon after she went back to Captain Alving. This means that everything he thinks about their marriage is based on what he knows about Captain Alving. She says that this image doesn't match up with who Captain Alving really was. She tells Manders that Captain Alving never changed and that this is the truth. In fact, he kept drinking heavily and sleeping with other women, but Mrs. Alving helped him look like a good person. When Manders hears that Captain Alving lived a wild life, he can't believe it. But Mrs. Alving hasn't even told the worst part of her story yet. She says that one day, she heard Captain Alving talk to Johanna, the maid. 
Mrs. Alving was in the same room where she and Manders are now, and she heard Captain Alving make a sexual move on Johanna. This amazes Manders, who can't figure out why Captain Alving would be brave enough to do such things in his own house. Mrs. Alving continues her story by saying that this is when she chose to send young Oswald away from home because she was afraid that Captain Alving would hurt the boy. After that, she wouldn't let Oswald come home until his father was dead. Soon after Mrs. Alving tells Pastor Manders this, they both hear Oswald making a sexual move on Regine in the next room. Mrs. Alving is scared and tells Pastor Manders that hearing this makes her feel like she's facing the ghosts of her past. She then tells him one last thing, Johanna and Captain Alving have a daughter named Regine. Mrs. Alving and Pastor Manders go back to the living room after a tense dinner and pick up where they left off. Mrs. Alving says that Captain Alving paid Johanna a lot of money to lie about who got her pregnant. Johanna told Engstrand that a rich foreign sailor got her pregnant and paid her to keep quiet about it. She then went to town and tried to convince Engstrand to marry her and pretend to be Regine's real father. Since this is the case, Mrs. Alving and Pastor Manders talk about how it seems like Oswald likes his half-sister. Mrs. Alving and Pastor Manders try to think of ways to get Regine out of the house, but since Engstrand isn't her real father, they can't come up with anywhere for her to go. While they are talking about this, Engstrand comes back to the house and tells them that the home is done. Turning to Manders, he asks if the minister would come to bless the new building, but Manders can't hold back his anger at Engstrand for keeping the truth about Regine from him for so long. He is so angry that he tells Engstrand that they are no longer friends. Engstrand tries to convince Manders that what he did wasn't wrong by saying that he was just trying to help a poor woman. Father Manders apologizes for saying such mean things about Engstrand and agrees to bless the home. He and Engstrand then go to set up the service. When Engstrand and Manders go to bless the school, Mrs. Alving spends time with Oswald. Oswald tells Mrs. Alving that he has a hard time being happy at home. He says that this is partly because the sun never comes out in this part of the world, which makes him feel like he can't paint. But, he says, this isn't the only thing that bothers him. In fact, he tells his mother that he is very sick. He says that he finally went to a doctor in Paris, who told him that he has been worm-eaten since birth. The doctor said that Oswald got this from his father, which sounds like he has syphilis. Worse, Oswald has already had a time when his illness took over fully. Oswald tells his mother that if this happens again, he will likely lose control of his body and mind and stay like this for the rest of his life. He also tells Mrs. Alving that he thinks he is to blame for his unhappy situation, even though he hasn't done much to risk his life. Mrs. Alving can't stand it, but she says she'll take care of him at home. When Oswald hears this, he asks her if she would help him in any way, and she says she would. As they keep talking, Mrs. Alving tries to make Oswald feel better about his illness by asking Regine to bring them champagne. Mrs. Alving decides to tell both Oswald and Regine that they are half-siblings. She tells Regine to get herself a glass, but before she can say anything else, Pastor Manders comes in. Manders says he has blessed the home, but when he sees Regine with a drink in her hand, he changes the subject. Mrs. Alving then tells him that she is about to tell Regine and Oswald the truth about Captain Alving. Manders tries to stop her because he thinks Oswald should keep a good image of his father. Regine looks out the window at that moment and sees that the home is on fire. Engstrand says that Pastor Manders started the fire because he saw him throw a snuffed-out candle into a pile of wood shavings. This is after the school has burned to the ground. Engstrand scares Manders by going on and on about how bad this will look for the pastor. Once Manders is scared, Engstrand offers to take the blame for the fire if Manders pays for his hotel with the money he gets from selling the orphanage's land. Manders agrees to the deal and follows Engstrand out of the room. Once they leave, Regine finds out that Oswald is sick, and Mrs. Alving tells them that Regine's real father was Captain Alving. When Regine hears this, she leaves right away, saying that she won't waste her time taking care of her half-brother when she could be working in Engstrand's hotel, which Engstrand has chosen to call the Captain Alving home. 
When Regine leaves, Oswald tells his mother that if his illness gets too bad, she will have to put him to sleep. He pulls out a small box and shows her the 12 morphine pills he has been saving for this very reason. At first, Mrs. Alving refuses, but she finally tells him that she will give him the pills if he needs them, even though she swears that this will never happen. Shortly after this, though, Oswald looks at the rising sun and says, Mother, give me the sun. Then he falls over and Mrs. Alving screams. She fumbles around for the pills and holds them in her hand as she looks at her paralyzed son, unable to decide if she should kill him or not. About the author. Henrik Ibsen was born into a rich family in Cheyenne, Norway, in 1828. He chose writing over higher study after failing his university entrance exams. But when he first started writing, he wasn't very good at it, so he and his wife were very poor. In 1864, he left his wife and five-year-old son, Sigurd, and went to Sorrento, Italy. Sigurd grew up to be the prime minister of Norway. Later, he went to Dresden, Germany, where he wrote A Doll's House, his most famous play. Ibsen's writing career took off after his first few years of failure, even though his plays were often seen as shocking and unsuitable. He went back to Norway in 1891. In 1906, after having several strokes, he died in Oslo. He is now one of the most well-known writers in the world, and his plays are put on more often than those of any other poet except Shakespeare. People often call him the father of realism in theater, and he is also seen as a pioneer of modernism. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.